Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And this video takes place on my birthday. I turned 17 today. Well, not exactly. You guys are watching this on my birthday, but I'm recording it a full week beforehand, just so you guys can get the top-notch quality when this video actually comes out on my birthday. So, like I said, it's my 17th birthday, and I kind of wanted to imply the number 17 into whatever this video is. I looked at all the Pokemon that are in existence. After some thinking, I realized if I go to 850 and divide 850 by 50, I get 17 sets of 50. And there's that number 17 that I was looking for. So this video is me ranking every Pokemon that lands on a multiple of 50 in the National Pokédex. Kicking off the list at the number 17 spot, you might sort of recognize this Pokemon from my top 10 least favorite Pokemon list. It's a pre-evolution of the number 2 spot on my list, and that Pokemon was Electrode. Voltorb so happens to land at number 100 in the National Pokédex, which means that I had to put it on this list. Therefore, Electrode is my second least favorite Pokemon of all time. I put this all the way at the bottom at number 17. Later down on the list, you'll see that only two of these Pokemon I had no trouble putting on their spots in the list because, well, they're terrible Pokemon, so I put them straight at the bottom. But the other ones, I kind of had to have reasons for why I put them in certain spots that I put them in, but Voltorb goes at the very bottom because I hate Electrode as a Pokemon, and since Voltorb evolves in Electrode, and they're both basically the same Pokemon, Electrode's just stronger because it's the evolution, I had to put Voltorb at the bottom at number 17 out of 17. Number 16 on the list happens to go to a Pokemon that I realized much later on that I left out of my top 10 least server Pokemon list for God knows what reason why. Number 650 in the Pokedex is Chespin. Chespin has a terrible looking spiky bonnet. I know it's supposed to represent the quills on the animal that Chespin is based off of. It still looks super weird. Chespin's evolutions also could have had a lot of work done on them, especially Quilladin, who just looks like the odd one out in the evolutionary line. Honestly, the whole Chespin line was a miss for Game Freak, and I think that a much better design was needed for Chespin and its evolutionary line. The next spot on the list is where it started becoming tough where I was going to place Pokemon. Well, certain Pokemon, but we'll get to that later on the list. Number 15 has to go to number 400 in the Pokedex. B-Barrel. B-Barrel is the Raticate of Generation 4, basically. Since it's a Pokemon that's often used in Gen 4 as an HM slave, I had to put it lower on the list because that's all I've ever used it for. Other Pokemon I put on this list are higher than B-Barrel because I've had an emotional tie to them, while B-Barrel has just been an HM slave to me, and many others for a long time. I'm not saying that B-Barrel is a terrible Pokemon, but B-Doof is basically a nearly useless Pokemon, and I've never seen anybody actually say, hey, I have a B-Barrel on my competitive VGC team. The number 14 spot goes to number 550 in the Pokedex, which is Basculin. I only put it higher than B-Barrel because, for some reason, I like this Pokemon's design more than B-Barrel's. I've never used it, there's a miss with that, but something about this Pokemon makes me like it more than other Pokemon, just like how I like Gen 5 Pokemon more than other Pokemon, and more than people often do like Generation 5 Pokemon. I mean, Vanillux, one of the most hated Pokemon of all time, is my second favorite Pokemon, so that tells a lot about me. But yeah, Basculin goes at the number 14 spot for basically no reason at all, but hey, at least I didn't put it at like number 8. The number 13 spot goes to another Generation 5 Pokemon, which is number 600 in the National Pokedex. And that's Kling, the evolution to Kling and the pre-evolution to Kling Kling. Kling doesn't really have that much of an emotional tie to me, except for if you go back to the good old Roblox days, the website that I played Pokemon more on before I got the access to emulators as a kid. Now, if you guys ever played Roblox or any Roblox Pokemon games, you probably remember Pokemon Brick Bronze. Back then, Pokemon Brick Bronze was my favorite game to play on Roblox, and it's probably the only game I played at that time. I just remember there was part of the game where you had to travel through the sewers for some reason, and they had clinks down there. And for some reason, I added one for my team. For what reason? So, technically, I have used a clang in a game before, and therefore it has an emotional tie, but it's not an official Pokemon game, and actually, it was taken down by request of the Pokemon company because it was too similar to an actual Pokemon game, but no. But I put it at number 13 because, while it does have an emotional tie, it's not an illegitimate Pokemon game, but still. Number 13 out of 17. We've still got a ways to go, guys. The number 12 spot goes to number 450 in the National Pokedex, which is Hippowdon. I've tried to use Hippopotas and Hippowdon, 
multiple times of playthroughs. But for some reason, they either got knocked off my team for some decision I made later on in the game, or they got murdered, like the one that was on my team in the Platinum Randomizer Nuzlocke. But other than that, Hippowdown only has a small place in my heart because well, a lot of the Gen 4 Pokemon are really good designed Pokemon, and I guess you can say I have an attachment to Hippowdown because of the way it's designed, but not much other than that. Number 11 goes to number 200 in the Pokedex, which is Mistrabis. Now, Mistrabis only happens to be higher on the spot because Pokemon Gold and Silver used to be my favorite games of all time. And during one of those playthroughs, back in the good old days before Mistrabis could evolve into Miss Magius, there was just Mistrabis, of course and Mr. Viz ended up on my team during one of these playthroughs and I actually grew an emotional attachment because it carried my team through many many gyms including Morty's gym which was the ghost type gym and you know that's kind of like the only emotional attachment I have to it. Miss Magius is a really cool Pokemon, but I've never used it, so Mr. Viz is higher than the other Pokemon that I talked about before on the list. Just because for the first time, this is a Pokemon I've used before in a legitimate Pokemon game. The number 10 spot goes to the first multiple of 50, which is Diglett. Now, Diglett has an emotional attachment for me in many ways. When I was a kid, way before I even got to play my first Pokemon game, I got into Pokemon with the original anime. And one of the best episodes I remember watching with my brother was the Diglett episode. I just remember us chanting Diglett dig, Diglett dig while running through the house. Duck Drio, 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 you know, you know the whole thing if you've watched the episode. When I actually got to play Pokemon Red for the first time, I added a Diglett that eventually became a Duck Trio on my team. After Lieutenant Surge's gym, or even before Lieutenant Surge's gym, you can access Diglett Cave to catch your own Diglett. Diglett and Duck Trio also happen to be one of my favorite Alolan forms, so there you go. Number 9 goes to number 750 in the National Pokedex, which is Mudsdale. Now, Mudsdale has only been used by me for one playthrough, and that was when I decided to play Pokemon Sun using Pokemon that only gained their existence in Generation 7. This was no Alolan forms, no pre-existing Pokemon prior to Sun and Moon. I just wanted to use a team full of Generation 7 Pokemon, and that was it. And one of these Pokemon happened to be a Mudsdale. I never actually finished that playthrough and I think I hard reset it on it and played it for some other kind of playthrough. Mudsdale has a sort of attachment to me for that sort of reason, but I also have always admired its design. Force Pokemon are cool in general. Mudsdale goes high on the list, but not too high on the list. Number 8 goes to number 300 in the National Pokedex, which is Skitty. Now, the reason why I'm attached to Skitty is because when I played Omega Ruby for the first time, and I believe when I played Sapphire for the first time, I had a Skitty on my team that eventually became a Delcaddy. I actually have a bigger attachment to Delcaddy, but of course Delcaddy is number 301 in the National Pokedex, therefore it wouldn't be in this video. But I put Skitty higher on the list because one, cats are like my favorite animals if you don't know. Generation 3 is my favorite generation. I just have an attachment to every Pokemon in that generation, so that's another big reason why Skitty's much higher than some other Pokemon on this list. Also, the last Delcaddy I've ever had on my team is named after my cat, Miss Kitty, who sadly passed away a couple summers ago. That's just a Delcaddy I'll never get rid of, and it, I cherish it for that reason. Number 7 on this list is 850 Sizzlepeed, which is the last Pokemon that's a multiple of 50 as of now. I'm sure that when we get the DLC, it will be brought up to 900, but for now, Sizzlepeed is the last multiple of 17 that we have in the National Pokedex. And my attachment for this one is that it's the first Pokemon I competitively trained up for VGC Online Sword and Shield because I hatched a shiny one that I IV trained to become perfectly good for battle. Um, it doesn't have its hidden ability, but it does have some moves to make up for it. And Sword and Shield is the first game where I've tried to do competitive battling, so therefore sent to Scorch and Sizzle Pete have a little bit more of a attachment to me for that reason. And another reason is because I love blue shinies. I don't know how many times I've said it, blue shinies are great. And although you can't really tell it on this line because it's on the back of the Pokemon unless you've caught the shiny. Number 6 goes to number 700 in the National Pokedex, which is Sylveon. I don't know why, but I just had a feeling that at least one evolution would have to be in the number 50 spot. And it happened to be the very last one in existence so far, and that's Sylveon. Sylveon, don't get me wrong, it's not my favorite evolution, but it's definitely not a bad evolution either. And you just heard me talk about blue shinies, and wow, we use this one of the best blue shinies in existence. I love its shiny. Like the pink eyes and the 
the element of pink from its original colors that are still in there that makes it with the cotton candy blue it just it just looks edible is it, is it weird for me to say that i think that a sylveon a shiny sylveon looks delicious because i don't think it is let me know down in the comments if you think that's weird but i really don't think it is i've only used sylveon once so it's not really that big of a deal but yeah that's basically it sylveon's a good pokemon it's the fairy type evolution i'll be on shiny is better the number five spot goes to number 350 in the Pokedex, and that is Milotic. Now, I've only used Milotic a couple of times, but I just gotta say, who doesn't like this Pokemon? If you don't like this Pokemon, I'd personally like to meet you in person to ask you. I'd basically give you a Q&A on why you don't like this Pokemon, because honestly, it's kind of like the truck to jump onto in terms of Pokemon that everybody likes, but you know. I don't see one element of this Pokemon that is unlikable. Also, it's Generation 3 Gyarados, basically, and I'm not saying that's ripping off Gyarados, but it's obviously a really good design, and I really like it, so that's all I gotta say about Milotic. Number 4 goes to number 500 in the Pokedex, and that is Embor. And this is the Pokemon that I kind of realized that the multiples, of 50, the multiples of 50 thing would work, because I was looking at my Pokemon Go Pokedex, and I saw Embor at number 500, and I was like, how many multiples of 50 are there in the Pokedex? And then I realized there's 890 Pokemon. And I explained this at the beginning of the video, so you guys already know what it's all about. But, like I said before, I tend to like Generation 5 Pokemon more than most people do, and Embor is the least best final evolution for a Gen 5 starter. It's a little complicated, but basically what I'm trying to say is that the other two final evolutions are better, but Embor is not terrible. I also like it more than other some final evolutions of starters, but that's why it's higher on the list, but not at the top. Let's get on to the next one. The number three spot goes to number 800 in the National Pokedex, which is Necrozma. Finally, we get to the legendaries. Necrozma has a big emotional attachment to me because when I played Ultra Moon and was filling my Pokedex, I fused Lunala with Necrozma and that was the top Pokemon on my team. And I named it Lightinium because I thought that Necrozma's Z Crystal should have been called Lightinium Z, but obviously they didn't go with that, so. But anyways, Lightinium was a very important Pokemon on my team it's probably the only time I've used the legendary at the end of the game because I really wanted to use this thing. I never used the, the legendaries when you catch them late game because I'm like, well, what's the point of replacing a Pokemon I've had on my team the whole game if I'm just going to replace it for a legendary I just caught just because of the fact it's a legendary? Well, you kind of catch Necrozma right before getting to the Elite Four, so I caught it, fused it with Lunala, trained it up, put it on my team, and yeah, that's basically how I got there. And for that reason, I like Necrozma more than I probably would have before if I hadn't used it. And I also used it to shiny hunt Pokemon, so there's that. The number two spot goes to number 250 in the National Pokedex, and that is Ho-Oh. Now, Ho-Oh has an emotional attachment to me because Gold and Silver, like I said before, used to be my favorite Pokemon games back before I got emotionally attached to Generation 3. And because of that reason, Ho-Oh, I like better than Lugia. I'm just gonna come out and say it, I like Ho-Oh better than Lugia. That's just a straight fact for me. Thanks for watching the video. It's not over. Don't click away. Ho-Oh is just an amazingly designed Pokemon, and I like how they just like to insert it in the anime many, many times in random places, and it's still not a bad insertion into the storyline. I saw a Pokemon movie, I Choose You, in theaters with my friends back when I was a freshman a long two years ago. I know. Forever ago. I, I get you. And that was really fun, especially since I was seeing it with my friends, so... Um, that's not the only reason. Ho-Oh has one of the greatest shinies of all time. I'm not going to argue with anyone about that. It has one of the greatest shinies of all time. And that, that nobody's going to change my mind about that because it has a really good shiny. Anyways, <laughs> that's all I got to say about Ho-Oh, basically. I really like Ho-Oh. And you'd think with that much talking, that would be the number one spot on my list. But wait until you hear number one. And I think you guys already know which one that is. And here it is. The number one spot goes to number 150 in the National Pokédex. And that, of course, is Mewtwo. Now, this Pokemon's placement in the National Pokedex, along with everyone else that has ever played Pokemon, this confuses the crap out of them why Mewtwo is before Mew in the Pokedex. Well, I really think the reason is because Mewtwo is part of the game and Mew was a special Pokemon given out later. That might be the main reason, but still, Mewtwo is a clone of Mew, therefore Mew should be before Mewtwo in the Pokedex. I don't care if it's a special event Pokemon or not, or if it's a mythical or anything like that. Mew goes before Mewtwo. But in the National Pokedex order, I guess not. But since it is at the 150 spot, I'm going to talk about it. And Mewtwo is the best Pokemon on this list for me 
because before I even got into Pokemon, Super Smash Bros. Melee Kids is why I got into Mewtwo back before Pokemon was my main thing. I loved the crap out of Mewtwo. I always thought it was so cool. And then when I actually got to play Pokemon Mega Mewtwo X, Mega Mewtwo Y is way better, by the way, guys. I don't care if Mega Mewtwo X has the vibing typing. Mega Mewtwo Y has a better design. But yeah, Mewtwo has just been um, part of so many things that I've experienced. Smash Bros. Mewtwo has been one of my favorite fighters to play as in any game that Mewtwo's in. Pokemon X, I had a Mewtwo on my team later on in the game. Mewtwo ended up on my team when I played um, Let's Go Pikachu, which like I said before, I usually don't have a Legendary on my team when I battle the Elite Four, but the Elite Four was over when you catch Mewtwo, and I only battled the Elite Four many times with Mewtwo to grind up on that money, because you have to have money if you want the shinies and let's go because that throwing mechanic sucks and I hope they never bring it back because it was terrible. But anyways, Mewtwo is at number one on the spot because I adore Mewtwo as a Pokemon as a whole. Mewtwo is just a great Pokemon. The way I'm talking about it, you might think it's my favorite Pokemon of all time, but if you're new to the channel and you want to see what my top 10 favorite Pokemon of all time is, Mewtwo's not even on it, sadly. But that's because I like more Pokemon than Legendaries, not a single Legendary is on that list. So I will put it up in the cards if you guys want to see my top 10 favorite Pokemon of all time. That is going to do it for this video. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like. If you're new, subscribe and ring that bell so you get notified about my other videos. And my current series that I'm doing are the Pokemon Shield Nuzlocke and the Pokemon Platinum Randomizer Nuzlocke. If you're interested in any of that stuff, I suggest subscribing. And just a reminder, the whole reason I'm doing this video is because it's my birthday. So if you guys would like to wish me a happy birthday, you can do so in the comments below, but it would be much more appreciated if you sent me a DM or even a tweet on Twitter, which I will always leave in the description of every video. Well, if you got this far in the video, I thank you so much. This isn't Broom and Burning Out, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.